Hey there, welcome to Encouraging Words. So glad that you could join us today. This week I have been talking about the church, the fact that the church is the people of God. You know, the word church is used in two main ways throughout the New Testament. The first as the body of Christ, the universal body of Christ, referring to all those people who have called on the name of the Lord, regardless of time and space, wherever they are, whenever they are, years ago, uh, centuries ago, if they called on Jesus as the Lord, they were part of the church as we are part of the church. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord is part of the church, the universal body of Christ. The other use I have referred to lately is the local body of believers, uh, people who worship together. In the Bible, uh, we read about churches that met in people's homes. Uh, that was very common. So in a community like, say, Killarney, where, where I'm at, um, the Church of Killarney includes all the people who call on the name of the Lord, uh, regardless of denomination, regardless of age, uh, regardless of where they meet to worship. Uh, if you call on Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're part of the church. But there are also local expressions of the church, uh, Mennonite, Baptist, Pentecostal, Anglican, perhaps even some who don't affiliate with any denomination, but rather meet in their home. It's interesting that very early in the history of the church, uh, there was some form of organization. It says in Acts chapter 14, verse 23, Paul and Silas, uh, Paul and Barnabas, pardon me, uh, appointed elders for them in each church. Uh, right away from the very beginning, uh, there is some form of, form of leadership being established. Uh, just down a few verses, when Paul and Barnabas returned home from their first missionary trip, we read, so arriving there, they gathered the church together and reported all that God had done through them and how he had opened a door of faith to the Gentiles. So as well as establishing leaders, uh, we see that Paul and Barnabas uh, are reporting uh, or being accountable to the people who had sent them out as missionaries. We see more evidence of an organized church in Acts 15 when there was some kind of dispute and the various apostles and leaders of the church uh, came up with a plan to solve the dispute and they wrote a letter that was to be shared with other believers. We read in verse 30 of Acts 15, so the men were sent off and went down to Antioch where they gathered the church together and delivered the letter. The people read it and were glad for its encouraging message. Uh, there's uh, leadership and there's accountability and uh, reporting back to the people that make up the church. Finally, we read in Acts 15 that Paul decides to go back to the groups of people uh, where he had established uh, faith gatherings, faith meetings, faith groups. Um, and we read in Acts 15 again, verse 41, he went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. Still no church buildings, but the groups of people who had responded to God were called churches. Um, Pastor, why are you talking about this? Like, this seems kind of redundant and, and silly. Well, first of all, we see that organization and accountability are not as unspiritual as might first appear. Early on, there were meetings established, um, procedures set up for the um, appointment or election of leaders and for accountability. People had to give an account. There were no one-man shows where uh, you know no one answers to anyone else. Uh, we are a body of believers. We are connected to each other. We are accountable to each other. Remember, even the house leaders, or pardon me, house churches had leaders. Uh, the house was just a building where they met. Uh, the church was the people and leadership was established. And it's not necessarily just the guy who owns the house. Uh, we could also talk about the organized church more 
And there are people who tend to like to dismiss organization as unspiritual. But we serve a God who's very organized. Very little is random when it comes to God or when it comes to our lives. Um, you know, we each have 46 chromosomes. And if a person has extra or less, we recognize that that is not normal. God is very organized. And uh, there's nothing wrong with having an organized church. However, even with that organization, we recognize the need to encourage and build each other up. We are not to be isolated, trying to live alone, uh, trying to, you know, suffer for God all on our own and make it, you know, by ourselves. Uh, God puts us in a family, he puts us in a body of believers where we can support and encourage one another. We need to do that. It's amazing with our new technologies that the church can extend outward even to people who are far off from us. And we can connect with each other uh, for encouragement and accountability. Today, I want to bless you and I want to pray God's blessings and favor on you. I'm not sure what all you're facing. Uh, we have people who are sick. Uh, we have people with family members who are sick and in the hospital. Families are being affected uh, by going back to remote learning in the next little while. Parents and kids will have to deal with that. People struggle emotionally and others are actively involved in spreading the gospel in other places. I think of some of our missionaries, the Thomases, who are back in Canada. Adrian's father recently passed away, and we pray for Adrian and his family. Um, I think of Doreen Lundy, who is back in the DRC, and I think of Colin and Melanie and their, Melanie and their family in uh, Cyprus. Uh, these are people, people we pray for and care about, and so we want to think of them today as well as you and whatever situation you're faced with. Let's pray together. Father, thanks so much that you love us and care for us. Thank you thank you that you put us into a body. Thank you that you put us into um, a group of people who care for us and love us and support us, people that we can encourage and people who encourage us. And I pray, oh God, that for each one today that is listening, we'll understand that we belong together. We belong with one another. We are better together. Uh, rather than being isolated, we need one another. Lord, for those who may have uh, been isolated for whatever reason and cut off, whether it's COVID or whether it's other things that have cut us off from relationship, I pray, oh God, you'll bring healing back into the body of Christ, healing back into relationships so that people can come together to encourage and support one another. Lord, I thank you for those uh, among us who serve as missionaries across uh, the, the world. I think of of uh, Colin and Melanie, I think of, of Doreen, I, I think of the Thomas family and others, Lord, that I haven't mentioned right now, but you know about each one of them, and I pray for them. I pray, God, that you would strengthen, encourage, protect, and keep them safe in Jesus' name. So we thank you for this day. Thank you for your people, Lord. I know many people are going through various things right now. We just want to be encouraged. We are the people of God. Not only do we have God with us, but we have God in us. So help us to be the people of God wherever we're at, and may we reflect your glory. May we reflect your love and your peace and all the things that you do in our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, may God encourage you today and bless you. And may you look for an opportunity to bless someone else. Uh, we not only belong to the body so we can be encouraged and we can be built up, but we encourage others and build others up. So I encourage you to do that today. Look for opportunities. God bless. Have a great day.